Ron, talk to us about healthcare and, and how it fits into the election cycle. We're obviously coming into a period when it's going to be front of mind for a lot of people and it's going to be much in the news. Uh, what, as a CEO of a big hospital company, would you like to see? Well, you know, you got to step back a little bit. There's obviously a lot of noise, a lot of different health plans. And, you know, from my standpoint, honestly, I run a business every day to try to make sure that we take care of our, our patients. And I really try to stay and my team stay out of the, the fray. Um, Medicare for all, I, you know, I don't believe that is going to happen. That's just my personal point of view. It's a very expensive and a very difficult process. And the, the concept of how would you make that change over what period of time? I mean, Americans like their health care. U.S. people like their health care. Uh, people who come here like health care. And I think we can run it always more efficiently, which we've been doing, and continue to drive for better quality. Uh, but I just think at this stage, it would be a big leap for us to, to make that type of a move. Um, the ACS still is, is out there. Uh, I don't know where that's going to end up. You know, there's, a, there's obviously a, an issue in Texas uh, that, where that's going to get pushed up. But um, I think the, AS, the ACS is probably here to stay, uh, the Affordable Care Act. And building on that probably makes a lot of sense. Do you think it will go the other way? Or do you think, indeed, it should go the other way, sort of away from Medicare for all? to Medicare for none? I mean, should the government have any role in providing health care? Yeah, I think Medicare plays a very important role, just like Medicaid. I think there are people that need it. I think it's a very good safety net. Uh, it does provide uh, certainly good, good care in, in good locations. Uh, but again, I think it has to be supplemented by commercial care and, and employee-based employer -based care. Now, obviously, you came into Tenet to, to sort of rebuild the company, and, and you're somewhere along that process. Right. Part of that is, is Conifer, which is the revenue management piece of the right. business recently announced you would spin it rather than sell it. What was behind the decision to do that? Well, we did take a hard look. When I, when I came in in the company at the late 2017, uh, first in the beginning of 2018, I, I stood back and said, you know, investors were asking the question, so we should go look at that. I mean, the investors own the company. And we did. We went out and looked at it, and I said, if in the market we could get the type of return we would want, then it would be a company that we should, we should do something with. Um, it kind of became a people showing up thinking it was a fire sale that we had to make you know make a change. We didn't we didn't have to make the change, uh, and we didn't do it. So we didn't get to the point we thought we ought to we ought to be with Conifer at that point. Conifer uh, during the same period of time improved dramatically because we big right. focus uh, on this on is a company that did uh, or piece of business I should say rather did about 350 million of EBITDA last year. Right. I mean without going into exact, so I imagine yeah. it would have fetched somewhere close to $2 billion. That's a, a lot of cash to have not taken in. Well, just, yeah, but step back for a minute. The company was a two two seventy the prior year, 270 ish and so it improved by $80 million in one year, all right? So we wanted that value in any discussion that we would have had. And it, it really should have, uh, in our opinion, fetched more than $2 billion. So we were looking for a much higher return for, for, for the business uh, as it was. Uh, at the end of the day, though, when you look at not only, it wasn't just a cash decision, it's a decision of what are we giving up, how are we going to do that, is this the best value for the shareholders? We stepped back, we looked, took a look at an opportunity of perhaps merging with another business and then spinning it off. You know, we did some very extensive due diligence, and the purpose of due diligence is to make a determination. At the end of that, we made a determination this didn't look exactly like something we wanted to do. So we ultimately took the step of spinning it off in a tax-free spinoff to, to our shareholders. Let's talk about the shareholders briefly. Obviously, Glenview are in there. Their existence in the, in, yeah. in the stock predates uh, your time there. Are they happy, as far as you know, are they happy, A, with the direction of the turnaround, but also with this decision to spin rather than sell Conifer? Well, I mean, they're one shareholder, okay? Now, granted, they're a very big shareholder, right? 19 plus percent of the company. They've bought more shares recently. Uh, I think that, that Jill Glenville is a very good shareholder. Uh, they're very direct and clear in terms of their thoughts. We have made some changes that they have recommended, maybe not exactly, but I, I listen to what they say, like I do, I try to listen to every shareholder. Uh, but at the end of the day, I, I don't know if I should sit here and tell you whether they're happy or not. Uh, I, I would imagine they're never quite happy uh, because we have more to do. But I believe they're very supportive, and I believe they are after the same objectives w which we are, which is to have a company that runs significantly better, uh, continues to improve, continues to have the right kind of governance, and I believe that they've, uh, they've shown their contribution in that area. Let's talk about the, the cost savings that you're driving, because that's been a big part of the turnaround. You've increased that number from about, was it $150 million a year right. to sort of 450 over the next right. two years, which is a, is a significant increase. 
How do you achieve that level of saving without deteriorating the patient uh, experience or, or outcome or whatever you would call it? Yeah, that's a great question. The, the most important thing is to protect the patient care. What happens at the bedside? The type of doctors, nurses, those types of things. So cost savings really doesn't focus that much on that. What it really focuses on better contracts. We have a tremendous number of suppliers. Uh, Re-looking, re readjusting, rebidding, reconfiguring, uh, getting some scale for what which we should be doing a better job at. So purchasing big area uh, contracts are a big area. Eliminating duplication. You know, when you look back at Conifer, what what caused that change? Eliminating duplication, consolidation. Uh, we have three headquarters sitting in Dallas. We have one for tenant hospitals, one for USPI, and one for Conifer. We're collapsing those into one building. So instead of having three different operations in the back office, we can now begin to consolidate to one. And we've done some offshoring. We were already had about 1,500 people offshored in technology. We're adding to that because we need more of a follow the sun type of business. So we need to do things in, in each of our businesses, and then we need to hand it off so that during what we would consider the evening hours, that work is being continued, and then it's back on the plate first thing in the morning. Okay, so sort of rationalizing the business as is, is kind of part one of the turnaround plan. Part two, obviously, is growth uh, and Correct. getting the company back to growth. How do you do that? What levers do you need to pull to achieve it? Well, we just added a new commercial officer in, uh, in Conifer. Uh, we needed to rebuild that group, and we've done that. Uh, USPI is continuing to grow, doing very well. So I think the only lever there is to make sure we're going after the right type of deals, right type of returns, that we're not getting... You know, we're not allowing the return level to deteriorate. We haven't done that. We're very specific about the kind of deals. USPI delivers tremendous product, great people, good model, and we're very, very structured around how we look at those deals. Uh, in tenant, we've seen admissions start to pick back up. Uh, it's providing the right type of services in the communities. We've built a model called the Community Built on Care where we are really focused in each community with what the needs are of that community and eliminating service lines that, honestly, we don't have scale or or the, the you can't build the kind of quality that we should have. So it's really driving deeper in each of our markets, and every market's different. And lastly, how does M&A fit into it? Are you going to go out and be an acquirer? I mean, obviously, getting rid of Conifer is not going to bring in cash, but it does free you up to be a bit more focused in where you may go with the business. Conifer is is separating Confer is important. It will bring in a debt pay down because we will obviously do a debt for debt exchange as we spin it out. So from it won't bring in cash the way you think of cash coming in, but there will be a transaction yep. that will deleverage. Uh, the second part is look, we're always a seller and acquirer. Uh, the most important thing is you can't get married to your portfolio. You really have to think about are you the right owner of each of the facilities you've got. You need to make a very um, thoughtful uh, this decision around is it to have the right amount of uh, leverage for you? Is it give you the scale you want? So to answer your question, I think we're always an acquirer and I think we're always uh, into divesting.